Alright, Deuterheads, welcome back to Cinema 4D Boot Camp. I'm Neil Berenblatt at creativecal.net, and now we're going to be taking a look at how to animate simply inside of Cinema 4D. So let's get started. Let's not waste any time whatsoever. So I'm going to make a cube just like that, just like we know how to do from the modeling tutorial, and I'm going to make a keyframe. Keyframes, in case you're not familiar with what they are, our definitions are recordings of an object at a certain point in time, okay? Of where it is, of how big it is, of how much it's rotated, of anything you want about the object. So, right now, it's at this point in space, at this point in time, okay? Oop, undo that. Bring this out. If I click this all-encompassing keyframe key right there, and uh, if you look right here, it actually created a keyframe. And here you can see the keyframe properties. It's at the time of zero frames. Its interpolation is spline interpolation. Lock time, lock value, mute, make relative clamp, blah, 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 blah. If I fast forward in time and bring my object, first move my object, and then set another keyframe, you can see a path was just made. Now I'm going to go back and play. Bam! Animation, baby. That's it. So now we can mess with those keyframes and uh, refine our animation to get it to look like we want. For instance, if I select on the very lower edge of the timeline and drag, encompassing both of my keyframes, I can, let's see, I can drag to make the animation longer, shorter. I could also just drag this keyframe all together and do that like so. But, for instance, if I had another keyframe right there, I could drag over all of them. And then if you drag with this in handle, it, um, it relatively increases or decreases the time it takes for this animation to happen, just like so. Uh, I can change its interpolation to spline linear or step so now if we make it linear there is no smoothness to this there's no you know starting and stopping it just happens whereas now with the spline it's, it's much smoother animation um, but yeah so that's simple keyframing we can actually keyframe individual parts of any object that has a circle next to it like that. So by holding down control and clicking a certain, I don't want to do segments, go to coordinates, and uh, all of these are keyframes. So I'm going to delete this animation track first. So I'm going to right click on the position, animation, delete track. I'm going to do that for the scale as well. Delete track and rotation, delete track. So now to do one just one piece of this thing at a time, I'm going to hold control and click on the circle that I want. Actually, I just want one. So click on the circle, just like that, and fast forward in time, change this value, and click it again, make it to go from yellow to red. And now when we play, great, awesome. The beauty of this is, I want to animate the pitch at a different length, different starting point. Okay, so go to frame 30 and control click that circle and go to frame 110 and make it go wild crazy. Like, yeah, like 400 degrees. Check that out. So different things happening at different times because you have so much control over what this is doing. So we can also change uh, if you click on all the position in keyframe, we can just change the position as one as well. So I'm just going to go to there and click again. And so now 
it's doing everything you want. You can do this with scale too, so I'm going to do this with just scale in the x direction. Any property, any property with a circle next to it can be animated. This one right here is kind of an all encompassing, so if you're doing a quickie, totally fine. It's whatever you prefer. Right here is if you're doing that quickie, you can tell it not to do the scale or rotation properties or the parameters properties by unclicking those. So whatever is highlighted is what's getting keyframed. So that's simple keyframing. What I also want to show you is adjusting your animation using the bell curve or as Cinema 4D calls it, the F curve. So if I go to my timeline right here, or for those of you who don't have it tabbed there, just go to window, timeline, and now I can see my animation in a much clearer way, like this. I can move my keyframes around as I could up there. I can zoom in and out of this and select everything and bring my key, my animation, make it tighter, make it longer, whatever you want. So we'll make it a little tighter. So now it goes ever so slightly faster. Cool. But if I go into the curve editor mode and click on my cube, I can see all of these uh, spline curves that I can adjust. So I can go, for instance, into the rotation, click on the that rotation, which I believe is the pitch, just like that, and I can actually change this curve right here. Or I could right click on it and say, ah, make it linear. I don't really want it to be Bezier anymore, and it actually didn't do it, but that's okay. Uh, if you know if it doesn't do something just do it yourself so just take those and make them linear so yeah that works now yeah it just starts off rotating or I can make it rotate really fast at the beginning and, and then end really slow yeah see how that did that very cool very cool and you can do that with any property as well and if you you can see all of the rotation just by clicking the rotation folder you can see all of the cubes by, you know, it's hierarchical like that. You can just click the cube and see all of the properties that you can change. So that's basically how you adjust animation in the timeline. You can even move these keyframes over here, like to different points in time, because basically we're looking at a value versus time graph. Okay. So you also have your different options up here, which I, I honestly don't use much. I just use this thing to adjust the freaking animation, you know, probably a good idea to know what's up here, but um, you can take snapshots, so that's cool. No, make snapshot, create view snapshot. Cool. No, anyone don't think that's cool. Awesome. You can go back and forth just like that. Okay, whatever. See if I care. Uh, the other thing we want to look at, which is pretty important, which we actually looked at in the interface tutorial, setting your frames per second. That has to do with animation. So go to project settings, and you can just set your frames a second right here. So I'm going to set it to 24 frames per second, and that does affect uh, your timeline. So I added it 150 frames at 30 frames per second, but I'm going to change it to 24 frames per second, and that adjusts accordingly and makes it... 120 frames. And lastly, as a cool animating technique, and to show that you can animate anything, I'm going to take a little hint from modeling and animate a little sweep nerbage. So I'm going to find my sweep nerbs um, tool right there, my little thing, and I'm going to create a cubic spline and just from the top view, just sort of make like a snake like thing. And then I'm going to create a circle spline. And I'm going to drag both of those, make both of those children of the sweep nerbs. I'm going to make the circle much thinner. And now to show some cool animation, I can take the end growth, just like that, and make it zero. Actually, I want it to go from the other end, so I'll make that 100. So I will make the end growth 100. I'm kind of doing this in reverse. And then at the end of the comp at frame 120, I want this to be at zero. So 
Look at that animation. Look at that beautiful animation. Just like that. Very awesome. Very cool. One other technique I want to show you, which is sort of animated related, and we get to use one of our tags, is the vibrate tag, which is pretty much synonymous with doing a wiggle in After Effects. So I'm going to take a cube and right click the cube. I'm going to vibrate. And if I just play from right now, nothing happens because nothing's checked, so you can't really do anything. If I enable the position, now you can see it's wiggling, it's vibrating based on that amplitude and that frequency. Now I can make random seeds, which gives me a different result for every seed. I can do a regular pulse, so it's completely regular back and forth sine wave movement. I can do that with scale. I can do it with rotation, just like that. Maybe uh, <laughs> bring, make it so scale, or ah, make the scale stop. Okay, so now it's kind of big, so. I will scale the thing back down. Apparently it destroys what I had before. Okay, so yeah, now you can see it's rotating. I can do this along any axis on any one of these properties. I'll make the frequency down to like 0.5, something like that. Yeah, so now it's a lot easier to see what's going on. Undo regular pulse, so now it's just completely random. And so yeah, that's the, um, what you call it, the vibrate attack which is very, very useful for animation. So yeah, that's simple animation in, in Cinema 4D. I don't think there's anything else extremely pressing. There's obviously more things to know about animation, but to get you started, I think that's perfectly fine and good luck and stay tuned. I'm Neil Brambot here at creativecow.net doing Cinema 4D Bootcamp. There's a whole series of these in case you're looking at this from God knows where. Um, so go find them, stay tuned, more coming, there's more available.